Good morning, students. Today I am going to revise the topic that is heredity. Till now, we have completed the topic that was the life processes recapitulation. And in yesterday's class, I explained you about the assertion and reason type question answers. I hope you have understood. If having any doubt, you can write in the comment section. Now. Today, another important topic that is the heredity, which is going to come in your midterm exams. For some important terms of that uh, topic, the first one is there that is definition of characters. What are characters or traits? A recognizable feature of a human being or any other organisms, not only in human being, of any other organisms also. It can be height, complexion, shape of nose, shape of chin, color of eye, color of hair, any feature. These all features are known as <coughs> characters or traits. Understood? So what are characters? The recognizable feature of human beings or any other organisms, organisms are called characters. Now, what is heredity? The transmission of traits from the parents to their offspring is called heredity. You have observed that too, some characters you are having like your mom or some characters of your dad. How these characters transfer? So the transmission of these traits from the parents to their offspring, it is called heredity. Okay. Now next, gametes. As now the I think gamete term is common for you. Gametes are the reproductive cells. Okay. Gametes are any organisms, reproductive cells. They are also known as sex cell. And female gamete is called X cell or ova and male gamete is called sperm. As in reproduction chapter also you have studied about this. That the female gamete ova or X cell is produced by ovary and the male gamete that is sperm it is produced by testes. So gametes are sex cells. Okay. Now. The next term that is chromosomes. What are chromosomes? Chromosomes are thread like structure in the nucleus of a cell formed of DNA which carries the genes. Means in every cell the nucleus is there. In nucleus there are the thread like structure. And this thread like structure when the cell is going to divide they convert into chromosomes and these chromosomes carries the genes. Now the next term that is genes and genes this question is very important also. It is asked in CBSE for one mark question many times I have seen what are genes. So genes is the unit of DNA on chromosome which governs the synthesis of one protein that controls the specific characteristics of an organism. Okay, so gene is a unit of a particular characteristics, and genes are actually units of heredity also, which transfer characteristics from parents to their offspring. When the reproduction take place, that time, these characters are transferred from parents to offspring. And the unit of heredity is genes. By this uh, diagram, maybe you will understand properly. This is cell. In the cell nucleus, in the nucleus, these are the chromosomes. Okay? And these chromosomes, you can see here, this is DNA. And the unit of this, it is called genes. And every gene is responsible for formation of a specific protein. Clear? And these are lead to um, for a specific characters. 
clear? So what is uh, the unit of heredity? That is genes. <coughs> now the next variation. You can see here in this picture, there are so many different persons are there. All are human beings. All are same species. They are having the same eyes, same nose, hairs. Okay. All the uh, features, all the organs they are having same. But then also they are having, we can identify individually. So these are, these are called variations. Like the color of skin you can see here. The shape of eye, the shape of nose, the height, everything this is different. These are called characters. And the differences in the characters of a species is called variation. So what is the definition of variation? The differences in the characters or the traits among the individuals of a species is called variation. Clear? And though the characters pass from parents to offspring, but no offspring is the exact or true copy of a parent. They are having the different features. Maybe they are having similar characters. Many characters can be similar, but there will be some characters which are different. And this differentiation more take place during the sexual reproduction. As you have studied the topic, reproduction also. So during the reproduction, during the DNA replication, what happen? Some uh, characters may be changed. So the, and as in sexual reproduction, there are the two parents are involved. There are more chances of the variations. Clear? So no offspring is a, never a true copy of the parent. Now the next term, dominant gene and recessive gene. First thing I want to say you, like this is T and T. They are representing the height, okay? Both capital, it is tall. One capital, one is small. And we, these both are small. This is representing the short. So the capital T is representing here the tallness and small t is representing here the short or darkness. Okay. Now what is the mean by dominant gene? They are present in the pair. Now dominant gene, the gene which decides the appearance of an organism even in the presence of an alternative contrasting gene is known as a dominant gene. It is represented by a capital letter. So you have studied, I ex, uh, in, when the topic I explained you about the Mendel's experiment, then you have seen in the F1 generation, all the plants are tall plants. Okay, though there were one capital T and one small t was present. So here what happened? Only one capital T also expresses his feature. So the gene which decides the appearance of an organism, though it is, um, though any other alternate gene is also present, then also it is expressing its feature. That is called dominant gene. Here the T is present, but it is not expressed. So T is the recessive gene, and a small T will be represent when it is identical genes. When the both are identical, then only it will express. So the recessive gene, the gene which can decide the appearance of an organism only in the presence of another identical gene. It is called recessive gene. It is represented by the corresponding small letter. Clear? Now what is genetics? The study of genes variation and heredity. It is called genetics. So, now the next term. Now the next important topic of the to uh, chapter is Mandel's experiment. 
Gregor Mendel was the first scientist who made a systematic study of patterns of inheritance. Um, means the transfer of characteristics, how it take place from parent to the progeny. The Mendel was the first scientist who has done the study. And for his experiment, Mendel chose the pea plants. Student, this is a very important question. Uh, the question is coming in this way. Why Mendel selected the pea plants for his experiment? Okay. So Mendel chose the pea plants for studying inheritance because pea plants had a number of clear cut differences um, which were easy to tell. Like uh, some pea plants are tall and some are the dwarf. So this is a character means tallness and dwarf pea plant. Then some pea plants are having the round seeds, some are having the wrinkled seeds. Another feature, some are having the yellow seeds and another are having the green seeds. The third feature, then uh, color of pod, the green uh, color of the pod can be green or yellow. The position of the flower. Okay, so in this way, the pea plants are having the seven different characteristics. On that basis, we can um, distinguish the two type of pea plant, and we can take them for the study. So that's why Mandel has selected the pea plant. So this is the first reason, and very important reason. What is the first reason? The pea plants are having the different characteristics, different. Um, characteristics which can be studied. Then second reason that too, the pea plants can be do the cell pollination also and we can do the cross pollination also. So they are the cell pollinating plants. Then the third one as the lifespan of the pea plant is very short. Okay. So, man, means we can get the fruit in a short period of time. So, in, a, in one year we can study the more, uh, what we can say the generation. So, many generation of pea plants can be produced in a comparatively short time span. Understood? So, this is the third reason. The fourth reason, they can be grow in a small area means in a small area also the pea plant can be grown and we can study about it. So that's why the fourth reason Mandel has selected the pea plant. Then the next reason is there, their study is much simpler than that of animals. Why Mandel has not selected an animal? As the pea plant study because of their different characteristics, it was easy for him to study the inheritance. So that's why he has selected the pea plant. I'm repeating again, the question can come to you that write the three reason or four reason that the Mandel has selected the pea plant. So what is the first reason? The pea plants are having, <coughs> pea plants are having the different characteristics to study. Example, tall or short plant, round or green seeds, Ra, ra, sorry, yellow or green seeds, round or wrinkled seeds, yellow or green pod, the position of flower, etc. Then second thing, they are self-pollinating as well as cross-pollination also take place. Number three, the many generation of pea plants can be produced in a short time span. Means the pea plants can produce the fruit in a short time span, so we can study more generation. They can be grow in a small area, and the last, their study is much simpler than that of animals, and that's why the Mendel has selected the pea plant. Now, some more important terms for that are chapter alleles. What are allele? Allele is a variant form of given gene. In almost all animal cells, two alleles for each gene are inherited. Alleles are present in the pair. Okay? And inherited one from each parent. One allele can come from mother and one from 
father. So, in this way, two alleles for each gene are inherited one from each parent. Then the next important term that is homozygous. Homozygous means two identical alleles of a particular gene or trait. As I already given the example to you for the tallness and shortness, short plant. So homozygous means the two identical alleles. Heterozygous having the two different alleles of a particular gene or trait. Clear? If one capital and one is small, T, then it is heterozygous. Both capital or both is small, then it is homozygous. So I hope you students related this topic. Most of the terms I have explained in you this class, just revise them. And specifically the question, why Mendel has selected the pea plant? Okay. So meet you in the next class with the Mendel's experiment.